Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It is Tuesday, October 19th, 2021, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a little bit later this morning. Uh, currently, futures looking pretty good. Uh, let's get the latest for you. Uh, right now, we've got futures, uh, Dow futures up nearly 200 points, S&P 500 futures up about 25 points, NASDAQ futures up 66 points. So it looks like this rally uh, that we've got going now here in October is set to extend itself another day. More and more earnings kicking in. Uh, things will really begin to pick up next week, but uh, still, we got a lot of earnings reports coming out this week. Try to keep you up to date on as many of them as we can throughout the shows. Um, let's, uh, take you over first to, um, actually let's go through the agenda today. We'll talk about some of the things we're going to, uh, go over. We'll start off as we always do with the, uh, daily market recap, uh, talking technically this week, we've got a number of, uh, home construction, home building reports coming out. So I thought we'd take a look at the daily and weekly charts on the, uh, Dow Jones, U S home construction index. Then we'll go into sector rotation, talk a little bit about the relative strength and some of those aggressive groups. Uh, we're starting to see that money rotate in pretty strongly into a couple groups. You might be surprised how well they've hold, held up during this past, uh, I don't know, five, six weeks since the beginning of September. Then uh, take a look at price support and resistance. Um, I'll show you how I look at price support and resistance. Um, I think it's mostly according to the textbook kind of TA 101 stuff, um, but I might, you know, vary a little bit. Maybe I got a couple tidbits uh, for you that'll help in your trading. Then uh, take a look at the earnings spotlight and we'll wrap up the show with the three you must see. Uh, but before we get into any of that, let's go over to earningsbeats.com. For those of you who are new to earnings beats, if you scroll down, you'll see an area where you can subscribe to the free Earnings Beats Digest. This is a free newsletter that we publish three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, the newsletter normally is out by about 8.30 in the morning. It's very brief. It's a very, very quick read. Normally just a couple of paragraphs and one chart, uh, just to give you a sense of how we look at the market. I think it'll help in your trading and potentially offer you a trading candidate if that's what uh, you know, you're looking for. All you have to do is type in your name, email address, hit that subscribe button, no credit card required. Uh, you can unsubscribe at any time. Um, one benefit, a, a really big benefit of being an Earnings Beats Digest subscriber is that when we have free events, we reach out to you and give you room instructions. So you're not gonna miss any of our free events. And we have a bunch of them. We had one on Saturday, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, most webinars like this or most events like this would charge. It was completely free. Um, ChartFest 2021, it was a four hour event. Grayson Rose, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, Dave Keller, both from Stock Charts, joined me on Saturday. And essentially, what we did is we went through and showed you how we use the stockcharts.com platform to uh, improve our trading. Um, organize our trading. And I thought it was a, a worthwhile event, very educational. And the good news is that there is still the recording available. So if you go to earningsbeats.com and you see this ChartFest 2021 uh, link, just click on it and it will take you right over to the recording. And the other thing is there are a ton of chart lists that we're giving away. Grayson had a bunch how he looks at the market. So you can quickly download his, uh, the way, he, you know, his routine and uh, the way he organizes his chart list, which I think is really cool. Then you are also getting Grayson's five stocks to watch, a little bonus. Dave Keller did the same thing. He, get, he went through his morning coffee routine chart list, his mindful investor live chart list, and then also provided five stocks. And then we provided some of our research uh, that we do just to give you a little sample the latest short squeeze chart list, strong earnings chart list, raised guidance chart list. And then I provided also five stocks to watch. So tons of free stuff along with the free webinar itself. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. It is a long recording, but you can take your time, go through it as you wish. 
Um, but there it is on our website. So we'd love to have you check that out and make sure you sign up because these are the types of things that you get um, at Earnings Beats uh, when we do these free events. So again, just make sure you go down, you subscribe to our EB Digest. One last thing I'm going to mention later today at 430, we will be um, drafting our ETFs for our model ETF portfolio. So once every three months, we take a look at our portfolio of ETFs and we swap them out, put in new ones. Markets continually changing and so do we with our uh, model ETF portfolio. We do this with uh, stock portfolios as well, but that will be next month. Um, you can go in and take a look at our, our historical performance. This is updated through last Friday. I can tell you yesterday was a really good day for us. Um, but if you scroll down, you'll see our ETF portfolio. We had a slight lead this quarter over the S&P 500, but that should have stretched out after yesterday's results get posted. Uh, but this was a, a really, really good uh, day for us in the market yesterday. All right, let's move on, talk a little bit about what happened in the market on Monday. <clears throat> we had the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 36. S&P was up 15, NASDAQ up 124. So a little bit of bifurcation where we saw two of them going higher, two of the indices going higher. And of course, the Dow Jones struggling to go higher, although it did rally well off its lows. Mid caps were up, small caps were up, but clearly the winner on a relative basis yesterday was the NASDAQ. And the interesting part was yesterday morning, I was looking early in the day <clears throat> and of course, a headline, can't help but see some of the headlines. And one of the headlines said, market overlooking strong earnings, worried about inflation. And I took one look at the leadership in the market yesterday morning, which was the NASDAQ. Um, that is the one index with all of those high growth companies on the NASDAQ. Um, that's the one index that would not do well if inflation was a problem. Inflation eats away at future earnings growth. So growth stocks would not do well in that environment. So whoever wrote the article, whoever is trying to fear monger, whoever is trying to get clicks, um, didn't do any research because growth stocks would not do well if the market was worried about inflation. But this is the stuff day after day I see in the market that makes absolutely no sense. You have to understand that social media, the news that you see out there, it's not really news, it's opinions, it's clickbait, it's disgusting is what it is. Anyhow, I'm going to move on talking about the sectors here. First, we've got discretionary. This is a group that has been showing tremendous relative strength now since the beginning of September. When everything was going down, you may not have really noticed it because discretionary wasn't soaring, but it was holding its own while the market was selling off. So its relative strength was building. And now you can see why. Wall Street was repositioning into discretionary stocks for the past six weeks. And now we're getting the breakout. Uh, this is a really strong group. You need to continue to monitor this. Uh, I am personally invested directly in the XLY. I think it's a, a great area to be in. Um, and, and these areas go through these periods where they take off and then they pass the baton to another area. Right now, discretionary is running in the uh, 400 meters and it's flying. Technology also rebounding nicely and communication services. These are the three that I like to see. And when the market is starting to show strength, getting back through key moving averages, this is what you wanna see. You want these three groups leading. Financials and industrials are okay. The problem with that group is it, uh, <clears throat> their leadership normally comes with rates rising, which takes a toll on a growth stocks. Uh, yesterday, we saw the, these three leading, which in my opinion is great, uh, great action. Now, communication services, you can see, still trending below its 20-day. Um, this is a group now that is rotating. They, they passed the baton back at the beginning of September, and they passed it on to discretionary and energy and those areas. Utilities, uh, uh, the weakest group on Monday, losing almost 1%. Healthcare, second worst group. Healthcare, I'm going to talk about in a little bit, but really need to get through that 20-day uh, EMA. We've been trending lower. Um, you can see, actually, rather than talk later, I'll just go ahead and tell you now. This uh, uh, P 
PPO, you can see it starting to move back up through the trigger line, but we haven't yet gone through that 20 day. Now, not every bottom finishes with a positive divergence, but if the XLV were to drop one more time to a new low, there's a good chance we're going to see a positive divergence. So I believe healthcare is in the process of bottoming. I don't know that we're quite there yet, but I think we're getting really close. So healthcare, you want to keep on your radar. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> Economic news out today. We've got September housing starts due out later this morning. 1,621,000 new units expected. August was 1,615,000 units. So we're expecting just a slight increase from August. September building permits, however, we're actually expecting a little bit of a drop. August was 1,728,000 units. And uh, September, we're expecting 1,680,000 units. So a drop of about 48,000 units there. Looking at the 10-year uh, treasury yield, yesterday, we tried to get back through that 160 level, failed. I think it's a short-term failure. I do believe eventually we're going to get back up to that 175 area. We are now trending up. So as long as this trend is in place, what I would look for is that rising 20-day EMA to hold. And so maybe we come back down a little bit in the short term, but we don't have a whole lot of room to the downside. And then I expect we will resume back to the upside and that should help both financials and industrials. So while we're pausing and hesitating, I think areas like technology and even consumer discretionary, maybe a bounce in communication services, uh, we could look for that. But eventually I do see a breakout. We'll probably see another pop in the financials and also in industrials. Financials, I think, look to probably head back on a relative basis to that June high. That's what I'm expecting. Um, industrials, which have been hit a lot harder to the downside uh, over the past four or five months, starting to strengthen. And the month of November, very, very kind to industrials. So if you pull up the um, seasonality and we take a look at the XLI, you can see the last five years, the XLI has gone up, six years up, seven years, eight years, nine years, 10 years. Look at that, last 10 years, XLI, industrials, has been up every November for the last 10 years. How about 11 years, 12 years, 13 years, and then we finally drop. So we have a 13-year winning streak on industrials during the month of November. That's, I mean, you can ignore it if you'd like, but to me, that's pretty significant. And then if we just, you know, that this is typically a good month for the S&P 500. So let's see about leadership. Well, last five years, the industrials have led. Six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, 10 years, 11 years, 12 years, 13 years. The industrials not only have gone up the last 13 years during the month of November, but they have beaten the S&P 500 every year for the last 13 years. Now, of course, you know, when you start pointing things out like this, they probably will, will end. It's not going to go on forever, but industrials love the month of November. I think we can probably see that from here. So very important to keep an eye on industrials. If the rates move to the upside, I mean, I mean, transports, I'll show you one more chart and we'll move on. But here, look at transports, been downtrending. Now the IYT here, breaking out to the upside. Look at that uh, PPO. Finally, we're seeing some leadership in transportation stocks. It's been a while. So I would expect the rising 20-day to be great support to the downside. And ultimately, I see us going back up and challenging that May high. All right, let's move on to talking technically. Uh, home construction. So later today, we're going to be getting housing starts, building permits. I think on Thursday, we get existing home sales. Uh, yesterday, we had the housing market index, which came in much stronger than expected, by the way, 80 versus 75. So we got the group now moving back through its 20-day moving average. So on the daily chart, it's at least done what it needed to do in the short term. If you notice, we broke down below this double bottom around the 1400 level, went down to 1350, and then came back up through not only 1400 resistance, but also that 20-day EMA. So I think we got a good start here on the uh, home builders. If we look at it more from a weekly perspective, I think it looks even better. Because if you look back to March when we broke out, we broke out above 1400, 
got up to almost 1,700, pulled back, we held 1,400, went back up 1,600, back down just below 1,400, right at that 50-week SMA. Look at the PPO, which is now reset at the zero line. So we don't have to worry about any overbought conditions. We don't have to worry about momentum being stretched to the upside. This is an area where I could see home construction moving back to the upside. And it's a part of consumer discretionary, which is seeing more and more money rotating into the group. So when you got more money coming into the group, you got a better chance of seeing it flowing into your industry. And that's what I think we're just starting to see here in home construction. So I like the group for both of those reasons, both on the daily chart moving through the 20 day and on the 50 uh, or on the weekly chart moving back and testing that 50 week moving average, which it hasn't done since June of 2020. So we're talking about 15, 16 months. Uh, it was, it's always important to establish a base pullback for a period of time. And I think we've done that here. All right, sector rotation. I wanted to just talk about, first of all, uh, the rotation yesterday. And this is what we pointed out top of the show. Consumer discretionary, technology, communication services. There's your leaders. There are your leaders for Monday. To the downside, as I mentioned, utilities and healthcare. So you can get this from the sector summary. Um, and I start my day almost every day with this. Within the first 10 to 15 minutes of the trading day, I will pull this up. Just a quick little what's leading. Where is the money going? And then I'll look at the charts, sometimes the relative charts, and see if it's a theme. You know, Maybe it's a, the start. Maybe I've been watching a group and it's pulled back and it's near support. Maybe it's just starting to kick off. Back to the upside in the case of the XLY, I've been bullish this group now for quite a while. And I think we're just now beginning to see, um, you know, movement back to the upside breakouts and so forth that I think could show uh, further leadership for at least a period of time here on the consumer discretionary group. Uh, the other thing you can do, though, with this is you can take a look from a, you know, weekly perspective and monthly perspective and so forth. Um, there we go. So one week, look at what's leading. Consumer discretionary, technology. So as the S&P 500 comes back up and breaks back up above key moving averages, it's being led by the groups you want to see leading. This is really important in the market. It's not talked about enough. If we were rallying back and we had, you know, consumer staples leading consumer discretionary. Look, it couldn't be any, any better. Consumer discretionary on top, consumer staples on bottom. When the market's rallying, that is what you want to see. XLY exceeding the XLP. Now, this is just on a one-week basis, but if you pull it up long-term, that re price relative chart, XLY colon XLP, uh, breaking out to new highs, and that is bullish. That is this, a signal of a sustainable, secular bull market rally. Um, so I'm still very excited. I've been saying even through this ABC correction that I expected this market to go back up, set new all-time highs, ignore all of the naysayers, all the bears, the perma bears that always want to find something wrong with the market. Stick with what the charts are saying. Um. Here's another chart of the S&P 500. Um, there was an ABC correction. So here was the September high. A is the first leg down. We put in that bottom. B is the rally back up. C is where you go down and put a new low in. Right there, C. ABC, that's the ABC correction. Look at what we're doing now. If we were trending lower, we would not have gone back through that 20-day EMA. The fact that we have climbed above and stayed above for three straight days now, above that 20 day, which is now starting to turn. The fact that we've got the PPO, daily PPO now turning positive. All of those signals to me are signs that we are rebounding and getting healthy again. And this is what you wanna see as we're going into the earnings season. So another pre-earnings rally, we've talked about this so many times, but we've got the S&P 500 rallying from the beginning of October through the third week of October, which is the period that the market typically rallies pre-earnings. So ABC correction complete, historical pre-earnings rally uh, currently in play, and the S&P 500 nearing 
recent highs again with leadership from technology, which is very close to a new 52-week and all-time relative high. Same goes for consumer discretionary. Uh, moving up, you can look at this uh, strength. So I said at the beginning of September, it actually the relative strength started back in the middle of August. But look at this relative strength. Throughout September, see the S&P going down? Consumer discretionary wasn't going up. It just wasn't going down like the S&P. And as a result, was showing leadership. So the things that were driving the S&P 500 down obviously were selling off. Some of that money was rotating over into discretionary stocks. If you don't look at these types of relative charts, you have no idea what's taking place underneath the surface of the market. Yeah, everybody's going to pile in. They're going to give you bearish you know, talk about how the S&P 500's topped and we're starting a bear market, blah, blah, blah. Look at what's going on underneath the surface. This doesn't start a bear market. Money doesn't rotate into consumer discretionary during the start of a bear market. It doesn't happen that way. Wall Street's much smarter than that. Give them credit. They would be tossing out consumer discretionary stocks. In a bear market, it's a, you go through a recession. Who's going to hold consumer discretionary into a recession? Consumer discretionary is being bought on a relative basis during this decline. Anyway, I could spend hours and hours on this stuff. Uh, communication services is one group, though, that had been doing really well heading in September. We, that's an area where we have seen money rotating out of, and it needed to. I mean, you think about some of the stocks in here. Google, Google's been straight up for the last year. I wouldn't be surprised to see Google of the, you know, FANG stocks. I think Google's the one that I would be most concerned with. Um, just because it's run so much. Think about where Amazon was a year ago. It doubled in about six, eight months, whatever it was. And for a year now, it's gone nowhere. Everybody thinks Amazon's a horrible stock because everybody has a short-term memory. Amazon's a wonderful stock. It's an awesome stock. And when it breaks out, it's going to run again. It may be doing that now, maybe starting it. Anyhow, uh, financials and industrials also since September moving up. Industrials are flat since the beginning of September. The only group that really has been poor among the aggressive areas during September and October has been communication services. And this was one of the leading areas heading into it. So it's okay for areas to pull back for a period of time after they've been leading. They're passing the baton and other aggressive areas are gladly taking that baton and sprinting. Um, and that's you know, good market action. All right, let's talk a little bit about price support. Just going to give you a couple of stocks here. In fact, I'll just annotate a stock or two. So here's a, a chart. This is applied materials. So if you're wondering what price support is or how you figure out what price support is, what price resistance is, number one, you've got to figure out what kind of chart you're looking at. If you're a long-term investor, you probably want to bring up the weekly chart. I'm more of a trader. I could use an hourly chart, maybe a three-month hourly chart. But here I'm going to go with a one-year uh, daily chart. Look at applied materials. Back in July, it pulled back to 125. Then it goes back to 145, which by the way, was the high in April. So we can put that resistance right up there. So there's your resistance. We came back down. We established a, a support here. We moved back up, um, hit this resistance, 145. This intermediate move down, established 125 as a low. Here was another 125 low, and here's another 125 low. So short term, I would say your support's 125, but I'd be okay with the stock, even if it were to go as low as 115, because that final high, the subsequent low went down to 115. This is the, in a series of higher highs and higher lows in an uptrend, you, you want to make sure you hold on to that, that higher low right here. So here's your higher high, here's your higher low, and then here's all your other stuff. So as long as we hold 115, I'm fine. Now that's still 17, 18 dollars below where we are now. So we still got you know room to the downside. But applied materials made a huge run. And when you get these huge runs, this is what I was talking about with Google. You can see long-term consolidation after that. And it gets frustrating during periods like this because the stock doesn't go anywhere. The market goes up, you get a little bit of a rally. And then when the market you know settles down a little bit, right, you know, right back down to support. So anyway, that's uh, price support resistance on applied materials. Uh, let's do one other one. I'll tell you, the I like to look for breakouts 
Um, so let's look at something like uh, Home Depot. Because the key in technical analysis is a you know breakout in terms of price. There's your high back in early May. Here was your test again in September before we pulled back. You got rising lows. But when you break out above a resistance level like this, it becomes support. So notice this tool with stock charts where you, it's the price support resistance bar, whatever you want to call it. But here, when you set that bar here, you can see that it's red because there are no prices above here. That sets the ceiling. But once you go through the ceiling, it becomes your floor. Look at it turn green. So that's a really cool tool and one that I use. I would say this is the tool I use most frequently at stock charts. So broken resistance becomes support. That's TA101. All right, earnings. Earnings starting to pick up a little bit. There's nothing really huge today, this morning. Um, I mean, we got some, some big reports. I mean, J&J, um, Travelers. Travelers was up this morning pre-market. I think it was up about 3%. So I'll just pull that one up for you. I'll tell you, the one I'm waiting for is this evening, Netflix reports after the bell today. And that's going to be a big one. I'll show you that chart in just a second. But here, uh, I think, you know, you've got a sideways consolidating travelers, 162 resistance, uh, 144, 145 is your support area. Stock was up 3%, but it hasn't broken out yet. We need to get through these recent highs up here. I'm going to say 162 or so to get that next breakout. Uh, but Netflix, I'll show you that chart real quick, and then we will move on to the three you must see. Netflix reports tonight. Look at the move that the stock is making heading into earnings. And the AD line is strengthening, accumulation distribution line. If I pull it up on a relative chart, Netflix was downtrending versus internet all the way until it put this double bottom in July and August. And now look at it starting to outperform heading into its earnings report. So I think Wall Street starting to get wind of some really good news coming out of Netflix. I think we're going to see a big report or at least raised guidance, maybe subscribers. I don't know. I just like the way the chart's looking. All right, last thing we're going to do, we'll wrap up with the three you must see. Uh, I'm going to go first with Disney. First of all, I can't help but notice the AD line really falling back here. That makes me a little nervous about Disney. Um, and the other thing that makes me nervous is it's got to hold on to price support. Talk about, you know, we just talked about price support resistance. Well, here, I think you can see that Disney needs to hold on to about I'm going to just put these two lines, 160 to 165, 167. This is an area that really needs to hold. And I would really like to see Disney begin to start moving back up toward that resistance just above 200. So I don't know if it starts at now or not, but uh, it is down close to a support level. So if you like trading off of support, you're getting pretty close to a buy signal on Disney. Next up is UNH. UNH reported recently had the big gap up. Here was a failed breakout at resistance. Close above one, uh, excuse me, 430 is what you're looking for here. And then the last uh, chart I want to show you is American Express AXP. E you can see these highs coming in, equal highs up around 179, 180. We need to break out there. I think this is setting up for a breakout. I do like this chart pattern, equal highs, rising lows. I think American Express is going to break out above the 180, probably sooner rather than later. They report earnings later this week, I believe, on Friday, but don't quote me, maybe Thursday. Double check that date, but they do have earnings coming up, and that could be the catalyst. All right, that's it for me. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Make sure you uh, sign up over at Earnings Beats for our Digest newsletter, the free newsletter. We'd love to have you. Take care, everybody. Be back tomorrow uh, on Wednesday over at EarningsBeats.com for your next Trading Places Live. Take care and happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.